So what we're going to do, do now is just summarize all of the things we've done so far this lecture in terms of this particular example. So we're going to sketch the graph of this polynomial. Now in order to sketch its graph, it would be nice to know where it's increasing and decreasing and what the shape of it is, so what's the concavity. And those things require us to know the derivatives and their roots, so we're quickly differentiate this thing again. We've already done this before, that's 12x squared minus 24x, and we found that that factored as 12x times x plus 1 times x minus 2. What's the second derivative? That is 36x squared minus 24x minus 24. We can factor over to 12, that gives us a 3x squared minus 2x minus 2. So let's go ahead and look at what are the intervals of increase and decrease. So again, we've already done this, so I'm just quickly jotting this down from before. Negative 1, 0, 2. We had that the sign of the derivative was negative, positive, negative, positive. So that meant f was decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. We have, therefore, that this corresponding to negative 1, we have a local minimum. What's the value? f at negative 1. Well, we throw negative 1 into the original function, and we can get out its value of 0. The next point we have here is there is a local max. So what's its value? It'll be 5. And then finally, we have a local min again at 2. And you throw 2 in to the original function, and you get negative 27 out. So we know intervals of increase and decrease, and we know the values of the local extrema. What about concave up and concave down? What's the concavity of this thing? Well, in order to figure out the concavity, we need to know where the roots of the second derivative are. So let's go ahead and try to figure out where is the second derivative equal to 0. That's when 3x squared minus 2x minus 2 is 0. So where is that 0? Well, we can use the quadratic formula here. So this is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a, and that's what x is equal to. So we have a 3 times a negative 2, that's negative 6, times 4, that's 24. Um, 24 plus 4 is 28. So 28 is 4 times 7, so that's 2 root 7 over 6, or in other words, 1 plus or minus root 7 over 3. So concavity, there's our number line. We're looking at the sign of the second derivative. What does that tell us about f? So we've got a 1 minus root 7 over 3. We've got a 1 plus root 7 over 3. What's the sign of the second derivative? Well, here I look at the second derivative and I say it's a parabola opening upwards. We found that it has two roots, so it's got to be positive, negative, then positive. You get that same information by choosing test points, but you can just notice that it's a parabola opening upwards, so it had to go from positive down to negative, back up to positive. So f is concave up, concave down, concave up. And so that tells us then that both of these things are inflection points. So we have some inflection points there. Uh, maybe I'll write points out in full points. Okay, so we've got some inflection points. Now we can take all of this information and use it to sketch the graph. So what is our graph going to look like? Okay, we've got interesting stuff happening at negative 1, at 0, and at 2. We know that the function value at negative 1, there's a local min there, and it's 0. It's a local max at 0, which is 5. 
or sorry, local max at x equals 0, which has a value of 5. And there's a local min of value negative 27 at 2. So maybe way down here somewhere. So that's our negative 27. So it's got to pass through those points. Now we've got to connect all those points up. How do we connect them up? Well, that other information we have is the function's decreasing down to our local min. Then it starts to increase. And now the thing is, is there's a max at this point. So it's got to turn around and do that. It's got to be concave down there. So at some point, it's got to switch concavity. It's got to go from concave up and switch to being concave down. Where does that switch happen? Well, it's going to happen at the first inflection point. 1 minus root 7 over 3. So 1 minus root 7 over 3 has got to be somewhere in here. So 1 minus root 7 over 3. How do I know exactly where it is? Well, I don't need a calculator to get an estimate of that. How do we get an estimate? Well, we can go and say, well, what's root 7? Now, well, seven's between 4 and 9, so it's between uh, 2 squared and 3 squared. So the square root of 7 should be between 2 and 3. I don't know, it's some, somewhere between 2 and 3, maybe something like 2.5. I'm just trying to get an estimate of where this thing sits. So what's 1 minus root 7 over 3? That's roughly 1 minus 2.5 or negative 1.5 over 3. Or that's roughly negative 0 0.5 or negative a half. So this is roughly around negative a half. And that's sort of where I put it on the diagram here. So it goes from concave up, switches to concave down. What about the other number, 1 plus root 7 over 3? Well, 1 plus root 7 over 3, that's roughly, root 7 is about 2.5, so that's approximately 3.5 over 3. That's like 3 plus a half over 3, or in other words, 1 plus 1 sixth. So this is approximately 1 plus a sixth. So it's 1 plus a sixth of the way along, so somewhere around here plus root 7 over 3. So there's the x-coordinate of my other inflection point. So we know that it's going to come down. It's got to come all the way down to this minimum. It's going to cross. It's going to switch from being concave down at some point to being concave up. That's going to happen precisely here. There's where the switch happens. Now it's concave up. And it hits. And then it takes off. And so there's our rough sketch of our graph. And we can throw this into a plotting utility just to see how we've done. So if we fire it into a plotting utility, we get that this is our actual graph. Let's look at ours. Yeah, we've actually got a pretty good job here. We've got that the shape all matches. What we found that's actually better than what's done here is that where does the inflection point happen? We see that it's got to go from concave up to concave down, and from concave down to concave up. But it's hard to see where the inflection points are. You won't know those until you actually compute them. But yet, that's what we've done here. So we've got actually more information in our graph that we've sketched by hand than is present, at least initially, in terms of the one that we got from the graphing utility. Right, we will continue this idea of sketching graphs uh, using this information in a later section uh, known as curve sketching. But that's for a later time. So that's it for this lecture. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again next time.